Welcome to a Slapshot episode of the Russian Rulers podcast. Today's episode is on something that I hadn't discussed in, regarding Peter the Great. One of the great reforms that he did, or reforms may not be great in some people's eyes, but was something called the Table of Ranks of All Grades, Military, Administrative, and Court. What this did is it tried to get rid of the boyar system, which was just hereditary in many instances, and give a table of ranks so you can uh, kind of meet each person's definition of nobility. Uh, so if a person was, say, a rear admiral in the Navy, how would that match up to somebody in the Army? Well, according to Peter, it would be a major general. And if he was in the civil service, this is similar to somebody who's a high state counselor or a president of the colleges. So what he did is he had these ranks for the three different areas, the Navy, the Army, and the civil, and tried to see where the people were based on their abilities. Uh, what I want to read is some of the things from the table of ranks and how they developed it uh, and what they wrote about it and what some of the penalties for not following this were. Uh, this comes from Reinterpreting Russian History, which was compiled and edited by Daniel Kaiser and Gary Marker. This is about uh, the readings in Russia from 860 to the 1860s. To the table of ranks enumerated here, we add the following points, which explain how one is obliged to act within each rank. Of course, here we're not going to go through every one of them, but what we're going to do is just bits and pieces that they uh, had translated. Number three, those who demand honors higher than their own ranks or themselves occupy such a position must pay a fine of two months' pay for each infraction. But if he is serving without a salary, then he is obliged to pay a fine equivalent to the salaries of those who occupy the same grade and are currently on salary. Number seven, all wives shall have ranks according to the grades of their husbands, and when they behave in a contrary manner, then they shall pay a fine comparable to what their husbands would pay for such an infraction. Number eight, although we already allow free entry in public assembly in the vicinity of the court to the sons of princes, counts, barons, the most distinguished nobles and servitors of the most distinguished rank of the Russian state, ahead of others of lower ranks, we of our own will wish to see that they be distinguished from others in all circumstances as befits their dignity. However, we shall prefer no rank to those who have rendered no service to us and the fatherland or have received testimony to their character. Number 11. All servitors, Russian and foreign, who occupy the first eight ranks, or who have in fact done so, their legitimate children and descendants in perpetuity are to be granted equal honors to the best nobility of yore, and all their dignity and advantages, although they might be of a lower kind and have never previously been elevated to the noble status granted a coat of arms by a crowned head. Number 13. Since grades in civil administration have not previously been decreed and no one or few people had honored for it, and since necessity now demands that they receive higher grades, for this reason it is ordered to take suitable people even if they have no grade at all. But since this will be insulting to people who are in military service, who have devoted many years to such harsh service, and who see people with no service receiving an equal or higher grade, for this reason he who is granted a grade must serve for several years in order to achieve the appropriate rank. Number 15. Whoever has served in military grades up to the level of commissioned officer, but is not a nobleman, shall, upon achieving the above-mentioned grade, become a nobleman himself, as do his children who are born during his service as a commissioned officer. However, if he has no children during that time, but he had some previously, and the father so petitions, then nobility shall be granted to one son only, for whom the father shall make a request. The offspring of those who hold other grades in both civil and court service, whose ranks are not from the nobility, shall not become nobles. And the last one, number 18, 
Those who have dismissed from service for committing grave crimes shall be punished in public on an open square, even if they are only stripped or tortured. They shall be deprived of their rightful title and rank. So we see that uh, this important statute, uh, which was issued near the end of Peter the Grain's raid, uh, reign in January 24th of 1722, it really embodied Peter's striving to establish a, an alternative to the old system, or precedence as they called it, that had been abolished 40 years earlier. The term of terms of the law expressed new definitions of nobility and opened up new avenues of achieving it. Most important, the table formally introduced the principle of merit in affixing rank, status, and to a certain extent, nobility. Still, the table of ranks never quite worked as Peter had intended, and it raised enormous, unanticipated confusions in deciding the relative weight of merit and lineage in establishing noble identity. Subsequent legislation from the 18th and 19th centuries, moreover, modified the table and even adjusted the grades at which nobility could be gained. But the table itself remained in force as a basic service text for nearly two centuries. Now, I'll just give you a few of the military grades and, you know, the first eight. Grade one, if you were an admiral general in the Navy, in the Army you were generalissimus or field general, and the civil you were chancellor or high privy councillor. Level two was admiral, and the army would be general of artillery, cavalry, and infantry, and then the civil grades the high privy council. And third, we have the navy again. Vice admiral is equivalent to a lieutenant general, a privy councillor, or a procurator general. Number four was rear admiral, similar to a major general, a high state councillor, president of the colleges. Number five would be a commodore, captain, similar to an army brigadier and a civil state counselor. Number six, you have the captain of the first rank, similar to a colonel or a counselor in the colleges or a chief judge of the gubernaria courts. Number seven, you have the captain of the second rank, equivalent to a lieutenant colonel or a counselor in the upper courts. And number eight, a fleet lieutenant captain or captain of the third rank is equivalent to a major or an assessor or vice chancellor, counselor, excuse me, of the colleges. So we see these table of ranks with some way of Peter really breaking down for the final time the boyar class and getting it to more where everybody had to be of service to the fatherland, to the country, to Mother Russia. Well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, short little slapshot edition of the Russian Rulers podcast. Uh, do come back for the next uh, episode where we will. Uh, bring in Catherine the first and talk a bit about all the accomplishments and you know kind of put Peter in review and see how he matches up to some of the future people. I also want to say thank you to one of our listeners who uh, put a nice little post uh, which I found uh, kind of humorous and, and interesting where he talks about the uh, who he would actually want to have for dinner of all the czars and rulers. And he said, I, you know, don't, don't really think I'd like to have any of them over, aside from maybe Dmitry Donskoy. They all seem a bit cruel, unusual, barbaric, and, uh, you know, just a, kind of a nice little uh, view on these people. Uh, you will find as we go along from here, as we start getting more of the German influence and the European influence into the court of the Romanovs, that they become much different and much more ordered and more genteel, as you might put it, uh, more in line with the other uh, European rulers. I hope, again, you enjoyed it. Don't forget to visit the uh, website at uh, russianrulers.podhoster.com or become a Facebook friend at uh, Russian Rulers History Podcast and uh, make a suggestion, leave a comment. As always, Das Vidanya i Spasiva Bolshoya.